Steve Evans. He has got the job. Your reaction to it? Um, as I said to you a few weeks ago after the, the breaking news when Steve Lovell was sacked, what was it about in hours before the Charlton home game, the final home game of the season, it, it's not an appointment I would back. It's not an appointment I can get on board with. Um, I think there was better candidates out there at the time who have since gone to football clubs in a division below. If you're talking of the likes of, of Daryl Clark and Paul Hurst would have been two names that jumped off the page for me that would have been ideal for Gillingham Football Club. Um, I think like everyone, we've all known it's going to be Steve Evans for a while. We was just waiting for the announcement, which has, has finally come this afternoon and it's become apparent that Steve Evans starts on June the 1st, so straight after the playoffs, effectively next week. Um, again, I'm still not... It wouldn't have been my choice. It wouldn't have been someone I'd touched with a, a very long barge pole um, for all the reasons that we're probably not allowed to talk about. Um, but for me, the biggest thing is it's done. We know what's going on. I'll still support the football team. I'll still support the football club that I love and, and still go and watch games and pay money to go through the turnstile um, because I love Gillingham Football Club more than I don't like Steve Evans, I suppose. Yeah, his CV, Matt, is a reasonable one. It's a respectable one. Rotherham, successive promotions from Leeds to the Championship 2013-14. Mm-hmm. Enjoyed success. Boston, Crawley. Um the kind of character individual that could, uh, you've got to emphasise the word, could get the Jills firing next season? He could do, yes. And I, and I totally understand the point of view of all those fans that have got no problem with Steve Evans coming in. But on the flip side, I can see the reasons why those that are saying they're not going to come to the pre-field, not going to watch football matches, not going to put money into the club while Steve Evans is the manager, I can understand that as well. And that's, that always comes down to, that's just people's personal opinion. And that's that's not just involved in football or Gillingham, that's life. Um I, for one, like I say, will still be going. I will still renew my season ticket. Um, we're a fickle bunch, football fans, and, and his record does stand up. My only question is, he always has quite a substantial budget wherever he goes. And if you look at his two most recent jobs, I think Peterborough, I personally think he was probably slightly underachieving at the time, considering the amount of players that he bought in last summer. Yeah, fair I, think on, Mans- yeah. I think Mansfield was, I think the the aim was probably automatic promotion, considering the budget that he'd rumoured to have had in, in League 2. And you think he'll be given money at Gillingham? Uh, the kind of money well, that Steve Lovell and those before him weren't getting? I think Mr Lovell would be fuming if he does find out that suddenly there's a, a massive budget and a massive pot of gold to start working with because then I think a lot of people are questioning and say, well, why was Steve Lovell not given the chance with it? Um, but we'll only find out in due course and, and we'll only find out what the club wants us to find out, I would imagine. But Steve, uh, Paul Scally, Solly's released his... Um, end of season report letter this afternoon as well to go with the news that, that Mr Evans is coming in and he says that he thinks Steve Evans will bring us success to the football club within our budget so to me that indicates there's not going to be a massive budget and it's going to be similar to what we've been working with for the last few years and, and, and that generally has been quite small compared to, to plenty of other clubs. Matt can I ask you finally appreciate your company again and keep up the good work on the podcast Jill's in the blood um, mm-hmm. Paul Scally, the chairman, we spoke previously how Steve Lovell was doing a, a major job in uniting the fan base and, and the, uh-huh. the club felt a much closer unit under Steve Lovell. The appointment of Evans off the back of Lovell's dismissal, the uncertainty of the new season. Are you concerned where this may take it? Uh, a little bit, again, and that's based on the letter that's come out this afternoon because for me, Paul Scally, is, it's a six-page document that we've been given, Dan, via email or via Twitter and um I think the first two and a half, three pages of Mr. Scully being quite defensive and um, he's de- yeah, he's described bad, the abuse. Get on, back, get on his back all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just just for those that don't know, Matt, I'll just say in this end of season report that he's published, he's considered mm-hmm. his role with the club uh, after what he's described as disgusting and disgraceful abuse from he's called them so-called fans. Your response to that? Um, you have to be very careful how you label it. Um, we have to be very careful on a much smaller scale, obviously, when we do, obviously, like because we're quite visible on the internet and we, mm-hmm. we're very careful with what we say. Um, what I will say in defence of Paul Scully or whatever you want to label it is I don't agree with people that have verbally attacked him personally. I don't agree with fans that have tried to get him at games in the past, in the last couple of years. I think Portsmouth at home on the telly a couple of seasons ago, someone had to be escorted out because they were trying to get at him. That's not on. That's, that's crossing the line. But at the same time, you're a football chairman and you're in the public eye and I think every football chairman in the land, every football manager in the land and every football player in the land at whatever level has to take a relative amount of stick when things aren't going well. Personal abuse, don't agree with, but stick, we all have to take it.